By now, it's evident to almost everyone that we're living through a period of radical change in terms of both nature and culture. And since we announced a new series on the nature of change and the idea of being on a threshold of change, we've received a number of questions and I want to answer a few. First one is, when you say thresholds of change, are you referring to a collective experience for all people? Yes, I think I am. Um, I think of it and I envision it as a great threshold, the threshold that humanity is on. And so in that sense, it's a collective condition and a collective position. Um, it seems to me that everyone is on this threshold, even the people who deny that we're going through great changes. It's that global, it's that universal, that the edge at which change might happen includes everyone alive at this time, even those who deny climate crisis or deny the necessity of cultural change. Another question, what does this idea of a major threshold mean for me as a solitary individual? So that's the other part. The first part of the threshold is that everyone is on it. Everyone is affected by the radical nature of change right now. And change happens, in a sense, by moving through a, a threshold in which you leave one form or one style or one way of being behind and go through the middle intervening space and wind up in a different place, in a transformed condition and in a new position. And so we're all going through that. But here's the key to this whole thing. Although it's a collective rite of passage, that's another way that I refer to it, we are each going through it individually. And it's going to be the uh, accumulated amount of meaningful change at the level of the individual soul that affects the transformation. It's a collective situation. I call it a collective rite of passage. But each, each person is making their own transformation, their own, in a sense, rite of passage. Each person in transforming themselves into having, let's say, a more conscious life, a more purposeful life. Each person is then contributing to the change which becomes collective and pulls everybody through the threshold into the new stage or the new phase of humanity. I think that's, that's how I'm seeing it. I've heard you refer to liminality as the sense of having to proceed without knowing what is next. Right now, that just seems to add to my already overwhelming sense of anxiety and fear. So liminality is this old idea that references the bottom of the threshold, the part you have to cross. It's also the middle space between what was and what is coming to be. And so naturally there, there's a tension, literally there's the tension of opposites as in a doorway where you have a frame with two opposing sides held together by the limin at the bottom. And so the, the places of change, the thresholds of genuine alteration and transformation are places that have tension. The difference here is in taking on this imagination, the tension becomes more intentional. In other words, if we say, okay, this is it, we're going through the tension of the opposites, not in order to collapse or become smaller people, but in order to get greater souls and be bigger, more purposeful, more conscious people and part of meaningful change that brings healing to both culture and to nature, then it makes, I think it makes it easier or at least more sensible and more clear what the tension is about. Anxiety is increased now because you have collective anxiety as well as individual anxiety. And fear is a proper emotion when going through that kind of change. So that's part of the change is to realize that sometimes it is not wrong to be anxious or fearful. Sometimes it is necessary. That's part of the change. Are there specific steps that are worth knowing when it comes to changing one's life or even changing our culture. 
So that's a good question and has a little bit of a trap in it. Uh, because if there were simple, explicit steps, then the whole thing would be easier. And so the nature of change is that if you can see the specific steps, you're not speaking about a big change. So let me just name a couple of things that are important. And one of them is letting go. One of the reasons people might desire to change and make plans to change and even try to change and yet the change doesn't happen is because in order for the change to enter in a sense, in order to, for the spirit of change to enter, we have let, to let go of something. Moving forward requires letting go of something that we've been carrying that is no longer vital or essential or alive. And that letting go is what creates the space for the spirit of change to come in. So I'm naming two things there, um, at least a two-part process. One, we have to let go of what is not meaningful, what is kind of dead or corpse-like inside us, and the other is then we have to remain open for the spirit of change, the imagination of change, the vision of change to come in. That's what it means, I think, to be on the threshold, is to be willing to let go in order to make room for a greater, more enlivened, and more meaningful imagination. Um, one other thing that happens there is on a threshold, we gather enough intention, enough momentum, and enough clarity that change can then happen. At least that's one way that I'm seeing it. And I think the point um, in another level is there are many ways to see it. Each person now, I would say, uh, having the challenge as well as the opportunity to find a place on this great threshold of change that makes sense to them, let go of what might hold us back, and then the vision of where we're going can come in on an individual level, and that begins to affect the collective level. That's how I'm envis envisioning the thresholds of change.